What's up everyone, it's your boy Norrenrad89 here bringing you another video and for today's video we are going to be talking about a documentary that I recently caught called Pennywise The Story of It. This is a 2021 documentary that is about the 1990 miniseries and how they you know, came about filming it. Interviews with the actors, the special effects artists, the director, all kinds of stuff. So today you're going to hear my feelings on this documentary and this is a very fun one because I know the 1990, you know, miniseries might be viewed as cheesy and, you know, very dated and stuff like that. And I know that It Chapter 1 and It Chapter 2, they did a very good job rebooting and redoing the story of Pennywise. But I just have such a soft spot in my heart for that original one because that, that's just my Pennywise. Tim Curry, that story, that 1990 with the, you know, the kids, the cast, everything. That's just the one that I gravitate towards the most. So this was a very fun documentary to digest so today you're going to hear my thoughts on it and all in-depth stuff about what's inside this documentary so stay tuned roll it So Pennywise, the story of it is a documentary that was very much long overdue. You know, it's been since the 1990s that this came out and everything. And so the early 90s, I believe 1990 or 1991 is when this premiered on TV. And it was a very huge event. And they talk about this in the documentary, how, you know, doing a production like this and being it's a Stephen King novella based off one of his books. And it's a really big book and stuff like that. And to adapt it to a two night event of TV, you know, a lot of people, the, this was a very huge undertaking. And like I said, this documentary well overdue. It's an hour and 45 minutes and it's currently streaming on uh, YouTube. You can just watch this on YouTube for free. So that was really fun is that it's really out there for free. Anybody can digest this. And I believe it's also on Tubi as well. So yeah, this is just one of those documentaries that even though it's only an hour and 45 minutes, they find a way to really take a good path, the editing and the way that they start from the beginning, you know, of the script and how it became a television product and, you know, adapting the novella all the way to the end of it and the special effects and the creature and the third act of the film and just capping off the movie and what are people's thoughts on it. So it has a really good progression throughout the documentary, which I like, you know what I mean? It's not like one of those documentaries that feels like it's kind of all over the place where it just has all these kind of random interviews and they're just saying stuff and those are fun too and that's really awesome but it's cool to have a clear-cut kind of theme and a you know a first act second act and third act that goes along with your documentary you know what I mean it helps with getting across your message in this film and there's a whole host of awesome interviews with like Tommy Lee Wallace the director who a lot of people know you know from Halloween he was involved in a lot of awesome films you know Tommy Lee Wallace really has a good filmography under his belt and he was the one director that they chose to tackle this project and there was other choices before him and stuff like that but you know people back down they kind of talk about this in the documentary there's also interviews you know with Tim Reed Tim Curry and all of them and stuff like that so it's really fantastic that this film the documentary you know went out and got everybody that was possible to be in this documentary you know what I mean Seth Green's in here as well Emily Perkins so you know name anybody that's in this film and they pretty much got them if they're still alive sadly there are are members of this cast that have passed away and they are no longer with us so that's very you know heartbreaking and stuff that's one reason why I can say that's one major like probably negative with this and it's not really a huge negative because you can't fight it that much because it it took them a long time to do this this documentary they've been gathering this footage and taking a lot of time with you know bringing it all together and editing it that I really wish they were able to start this sooner that way they were able to get some other actors in this documentary one of my favorite interviews in here is Jared Blanchard who played Henry Bowers and man it's so fantastic to get his perspective on it because he was he said like this scrawny kid who he didn't view himself as like kind of this tough guy and the inspiration from certain kind of actors and characters throughout film history that he took that inspiration from to bring a certain intensity and a certain you know like veracity to his role as Bowers on screen so that was really cool one of my favorite interviews for the documentary they also talk a lot about how this documentary, the special effects and like just getting the funding for it and stuff like that. And really just like this was a huge event. Like this was something that was like, oh my God, how can we do this? How can we translate this awesome Stephen King book 
into this film thing and you know what I mean into just two nights of you know TV and to take these characters and really give them certain nuances and have the older actors hang out with the younger actors that way they were able to develop a relationship so when you see them on screen that's one of my favorite things about the it 1990 miniseries is that like even though the new ones are very good and they got such a good cast and the production value is way higher with the new movies that andy muschetti did that the it 90 1990 miniseries it just the cast feels so wholesome they feel like real people like when i watch those young kids you know what I mean? As those cast members, and then you see them grow up in the movie, and you see the grown-up side of that film, I still feel like it's them. It's still Mikey. It's still Richie. It's still Billy. Like, it's still all of them. You know what I mean? It's still Beverly. So that's what I mean. It has this just wholesome nostalgia feel to it, and I know, like, some people say it's got some cheesy stuff going on, and they lean heavy on Tim Curry, which we can't not, you know, bring up this documentary or this movie and not talk about Tim Curry the freaking legend like for real he is my pennywise and tim curry is the one that you know for years and years haunted many kids and adults in terms of like we're afraid of clowns like and i know he talks about in the documentary that necessarily wasn't his thing because for a long time clowns got a bad rap because of this film and that necessarily wasn't what he was trying to go for but tim curry really sunk his teeth into this role and became this character and you know he even said he had fun being terrifying and messing around with the kids you know on set and for me this one it has to do with a lot of the fact that i did discover this at a young age i believe i was probably like i think nine or 10 i don't remember the exact age but i was pretty young when i discovered this film and man it just it was like, I loved it because it has that kind of stand by me feel to it. It has that, you know, that feel to it in terms of the kids and the atmosphere, but it has horror stuff going on in it. And that's what I love. And I know there's, you know, like some dark subject matter in Stand By Me, that movie as well. But it, this film has, you know, children being hunted and killed by this entity from another world. So... I just thought it was fascinating and that he used, you know, the clown, you know, disguise to really, you know, get the kids to, you know, lure them in and everything. So this film, it just has a lot to do and is easily one of the greatest Stephen King films and representations. And still for me to this day, I like these films better than It Chapter 1 and It Chapter 2, which I'm not saying those are bad films. You know, Andy Muschietti did everything he could and you know, Skarsgård and all the people that were involved with those films, they did a fantastic job and I highly recommend checking them out and I understand why people love those more than this film, but yeah, this, or the miniseries, but yeah, for me, it's always this miniseries, like even the length, the time running stuff, like in terms of a negative, it would just be the fact that I don't always have time in my day to carve out that much time, you know, with having kids and, you know, having a family and all that kind of stuff and responsibilities that I can't always carve out three hours and a half of time to sit down and enjoy this mini series. So that's one negative that you can't really hold it too much against this because they were really trying to take a very dense book, you know what I mean? A Stephen King book that has a lot of character stuff in it. And like, you know, I think it's over a thousand pages if I remember correctly, I'm not too sure. And I wish they would have got Stephen King for interviews in this film, but they have some old footage of him doing like presentations and talking about where he gets his inspiration from and stuff like that. So it's really cool that they added him to it, but there's not a lot of him in this documentary just kind of snippets of like interviews and you know dialogue of stuff that he said about the book or you know about the movie and everything and the fact that he actually when he saw it he watched this film you know by himself when they finished it he screened it by himself in his own personal theater and watched it and he, he did enjoy this one and he liked it so you know that goes a long way with the creator when he comes out and he's able to give you that stamp of approval that you did a good job Another section of the documentary that's really fun too is the special effects and when they talk about the spider and the stop motion animation and when you really get to see that that spider that they created for the end of the third act of this film which is a lot of people talk about one of the huge negatives for people with this movie is that that spider was able to do a lot more in terms of like the movement and the face and the jowls drooling and the venom and like the, the face you know the the claws everything it was able to do quite a bit of stuff but they were you know when they got on set and they were doing the shooting and everything they were really trying to rush the film and get it done 
and they just, you know, like really quick took some shots, did the stuff they wanted to do with the cast members, the older cast members, you know, killing it and pulling out, and like punching it and when they pull out its heart and kill it. So yeah, that's one thing that kind of sucks when you're filming that, you know, time-wise that could always take it, you know, take away from the film because you got to rush and you got to finish things to get it done. These are just my thoughts and my opinions on the Pennywise, the story of it documentary and in terms of my rating and my feelings on this film it is a 9.5 out of 10 this is like for, for real one of the best documentaries that i've seen like in terms of like said negatives it's just i wish it was probably a little bit longer it probably could have even been a little bit longer and that's about it and like for real there's no other negatives they really have and a lot of awesome interviews they dive into every aspect of this film the editing and the process they go with telling you and taking you on the path it's a really fun journey and i highly recommend this film even if you're not a horror fan this is a good film to watch because it shows you how people create things and how they casted it and how the movies come to fruition, you know what I mean? Because that's always a bright thing. A thing that I love is being a cinephile is I love checking out films and documentaries and seeing, you know, back to, you know, the back scenes, featurettes and stuff because I love seeing how these movies are brought to life. And this is one that I highly recommend. But be sure to like, subscribe, and have that notification bell poked so you're notified anytime I post a video, but most importantly, I want y'all to have a safe and happy day. Peace out.